Hello everyone, welcome back to Real Life. I hope you're having a great day. It's always a pleasure to share a new episode with you. Before we start today's episode, a reminder that you have access to our easy to use episode map guide, which will link you to all 1300 plus episodes around the globe. Just click on the map link below, zoom into any part of the planet, click on the blue, red or orange dot to connect you directly with that episode. The episode title and details will appear on the left side. Click on the blue link and you're on to that vintage reel or video. You may want to zoom in closer as there may be more than one episode clustered together. And a special hello to everyone in Burns Lake. I hope to entertain you and pique your interest in obscure and fascinating vintage amateur footage from around the globe and over the past century. This 1958 reel captures life in one of the remote parts of British Columbia. 200 kilometers west of Prince George and 350 kilometers north of Vancouver as the crow flies in the quaint village of Burns Lake. British Columbia was celebrating its centenary in 1958. Parades were held in big and small towns alike. In small remote villages, nearly everyone participated or watched from the sidelines. Colorful floats, marching bands, commercial entries all participated. The Rotary Pipe Band from Prince George made the journey to lend the skirl of the pipes and drums. There are likely some amusing stories from the day and there are plenty of faces to recognize. Burns Lake is a rural village in northwestern central interior of British Columbia, incorporated in 1923. Burns Lake's first inhabitants were the Carrier First Nation communities that spanned much of the Lake District and beyond. Burns Lake itself began as a small rest stop for travelers on the way to the Yukon Gold Rush. Many of these travelers spotted opportunity in the rich forestry, fur, and mining opportunities in Burns Lake and the surrounding area. The village acquired its name after Michael Burns, who was an explorer for the Collins Overland Telegraph Scheme. Burns passed Burns Lake in about 1866 while surveying a route from Fort Razor to Hagwilgut. Recent research indicates that Burns was also a miner during the Caribou Gold Rush and had staked a claim on Williams Creek earlier in 1861. On the 1866 trail map of the area, the name Burns Lake appears. After 1876, however, the map indicates it was Burns Lake, with a U instead of with a Y. Burns Lake's mayor in 1958 was William Gilgan, who was elected in December 1957. He became Burns Lake's longest serving mayor. The population of Burns Lake in 1958 was about a thousand people. A few significant events made the news locally. The second Burns Lake Wolf Cub Pack was chartered. The longest ambulance trip of the year was made when Chichiskin Lake resident Frank Buchart was transferred from the Burns Lake Hospital to the Vanderhoof Hospital. Fundraising for the new Burns Lake Hospital reached $64,314. The Federal Minister of Transport announced that work on Burns Lake Seaplane Wharf would start soon. One of the largest graduating classes at Lakes District Secondary School celebrated with a dinner and award ceremony. There were 10 graduates in total. A Burns Lake girl, Norma Merrill, presented a bouquet to Princess Margaret during the latter's visit to the Children's Hospital in Vancouver. Merrill was in a hospital recovering from open heart surgery at the time. Ben Ginter construction of Prince George built 7.66 miles of new highway from Tintagal to Burns Lake. It was a difficult job due to the amount of blasting required. Premier W.A.C. Bennett paid a visit to Burns Lake and spoke at the Civic Center. The Immaculata Catholic Church opened in Burns Lake but burned to the ground not long after. This reel jumps to winter with an outdoor nativity scene, possibly somewhere in the village.
We're now at what's likely a kids' hockey season wrap-up with awards and trophies. These boys are now gentlemen in their mid to late 70s. Likely, a few faces may be recognized. If you enjoyed this and other episodes, please consider supporting this channel as a member. After sourcing a film, it takes between 8 and 16 hours to produce each episode from digitizing, research, writing, voiceover, editing, and final output. Thank you to all my subscribers and members for making this channel a possibility. Don't forget to subscribe, as that's the only way you'll learn of the new episodes being released Fridays and Saturdays. Thank you for helping fill in the blanks on all these episodes. On occasions, I do make mistakes. I mispronounce locations and sometimes overlook some details. I very much appreciate the corrections you share on the comments section. Thanks for not being too hard on me. It's a delight seeing the collaboration among viewers. It's even more meaningful when I learn that a family member or friend is recognized even 50 plus years later. Back to summer footage, possibly in 1959, at an unidentified lake. The only clues are the cabins and the small vessel, Noisy Mabel.
There's a brief clip of a parade that may be in Vernon. Sadly, it was captured in evening with hard light and shade. The RCMP band is parading in a location I've not been able to figure out yet. The final bit shows the cinematographer's color-coordinated car and camper trailer in a few stops. Color-coordinated cars and campers was actually a thing back then. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Be kind, and we'll see you next time on Real Life.